Breast cancer is the number one cancer that affects women in the UK. Around 50,000 women and 390 men per year are diagnosed with the disease, according to Cancer Research UK. Hi, my name is Dr. Tasha and I'm a breast surgeon. A breast cancer diagnosis can be life-changing and whilst the treatment can have a profound effect on physical health, it can also have an impact on mental health. Thankfully, more people are surviving breast cancer. Yet we know that around 60% of patients with a breast cancer diagnosis still suffer from symptoms of post-traumatic stress at one year post-diagnosis. Feelings of anxiety and depression are not uncommon. People also have many fears, including that of recurrence. When we are put in challenging and stressful situations, we all cope differently. And this is also true when we look at those affected by breast cancer. Some are better able to manage their emotional feelings, whilst others find it quite a challenge. And so why is that? How does the brain cope with a breast cancer diagnosis? This is a question I posed to Nazanin Direction, a professor of experimental psychopathology at Birkbeck, University of London, and she is also the director of the Brick Centre. Professor Direction's work looks into neurocognitive mechanisms underlying anxiety and depressive vulnerability, particularly amongst women who have been diagnosed with primary or secondary breast cancer. She explains that the brain plays a role in how we cope with various emotional and life stresses. Previous life experiences can have an impact. If a person classes themselves as a warrior or anxious, then their brain will have a greater susceptibility in becoming anxious and stressed when faced with challenging situations, such as having a breast cancer diagnosis. Their brains are hypervigilant and are constantly looking out for threats resulting in more ruminative thoughts and generalized anxiety, which becomes cyclical and can perpetuate. It appears that this state of hypervigilance is less pronounced in those who cope better with a cancer diagnosis. In this group of people, the cognitive side of the brain is more in control over the emotional side, allowing for a better sense of control and reducing the emotional vulnerability. It's very common to hear that people describe their feelings as a roller coaster of emotions following a breast cancer diagnosis. And in fact, this is the norm and a state that is preferred. The danger sets in when there is too much emphasis on one state versus the other, says Professor Direction. On one hand, you don't want to be in complete denial about your diagnosis. And on the other hand, you don't want it to be completely paralyzed by it either. What we want to achieve is a state of harmony between the emotional side of the brain and the cognitive side of the brain. And Professor Direction describes this as a seesaw effect. When the emotional side is becoming more dominant, then the cognitive side takes over and vice versa. This way, a relatively balanced sense of being can be experienced. So what strategies can you use to help cope with feelings of emotional vulnerability? Number one, mindfulness. This is a practice that focuses one's mind and attention to the present. It is based on Buddhist traditions and ancient meditative techniques. Mindfulness has become popular recently as more people attest to its benefits. Many studies have shown how this practice can reduce anxiety, frequency of ruminative thoughts and worry. There is also evidence to suggest that regular practice may be a preventative strategy to halt the development of mental health problems. Number two is breath work. Breath work involves breathing exercises where you change your breathing rate and depth that focuses the mind, bringing awareness to your breath. It has been found that this can calm an agitated mind and relieve symptoms of anxiety and PTSD. There are many types of breathwork practices and some you can do yourself, others you may require practitioners to guide you. Number three, engaging the brain and challenging yourself. You can do this by performing simple tasks. The important thing is to make sure it involves a degree of thinking and that it challenges your brain. Reading, playing an instrument, gardening, doing puzzles, playing games, or even just tidying up. These simple tasks focus the mind and engages the brain. The more engaging a lifestyle you lead, the more you can improve your brain health. Number four is self-care. It is always so important to give yourself self-care. We all live in a world that is full of distractions and obligations, and the need to always be productive and having to contend with the demands of your time and energy is forever present. 
the constant state of busyness is now becoming the norm. And we need to stop and check in. Give yourself permission to do something just for you, something that brings you joy and excitement. These could be simple things like phoning a friend, reading a book, watching your favorite program, taking a long bath, or even having a favorite glass of wine. Whatever it is, remember that you should give yourself the time it needs. Self-care is important and you deserve it. Navigating a breast cancer diagnosis can be challenging and at times really hard. I hope some of these strategies can help in some small way. I'll see you in the next video.